Hey guys, my name is Jason with S&J Forest Products, and I've been wanting to make this video for a long time, and finally the burn ban is off now. So I'm going to try and make some biochar in this 55-gallon drum behind me. And this is just going to be a little bit of an experiment. Um, I'd like to scale this up if this works. Uh, but somebody posted a comment on one of my videos the other day about making some biochar, and so I thought I'd make a video of it. So I'll show you kind of what I'm going to do here. So the idea here is that you burn material in a starved oxygen environment. So I'm going to start a little fire down there in the bottom of that barrel. And I got it tipped so you can kind of create a draft there and get some air down in there. And I'll just slowly build that fire up. And as the wood burns down into coals, I'll quickly put some more, well quickly might be an exaggeration, but I'll put some more material on top and it's the material that's burning on top is going to starve the coals in the bottom for oxygen. And so they'll just pyrolyze, release all their um, volatiles, and we'll just have charcoal at the end, pure carbon. And I'm excited about this process because you've seen on my other videos, I've got a lot of cutoffs and ends and pieces and junk just from my sawmilling stuff that I've been doing. So we're going to try and take this pile today, which is Oh, I don't know, five or maybe ten times the volume of that, that drum over there. And I'm going to cut it up into small pieces and we'll, we'll get it burned up in that drum and see how much biochar we can make. But the, the thing I'm really excited about is if I can scale this process up, might be hard to tell, but I've got mountains of slash from the old logging that went on here a couple years ago. There's one. There's one. Just panning around our landing here. There's a big one over there. There's one back there. There's all these cedar rounds that I don't know what I'm going to do with, but those would be a candidate as well. Here's another pile. So, I mean, I've got loads and loads and loads of slash to burn. And it's all, I mean, that's, that's the perfect pile for that because it's all four inch and smaller. And if I could make a really big drum or a really big flame cap kiln, I think is what they're called, like a four foot by eight foot or a eight foot by 12 foot or something. And I could just load that stuff with the excavator, just grab it and just feed this, this huge, essentially burn barrel and make, you know, several yards at a time. Uh, that'd be pretty cool. And it'd use up a bunch of the, the slash. We'd get it all cleaned up. I'd make a product that I could then sell, um, to the farmers around here as a, as a soil, um, additive. If you guys have any other suggestions about what to do with these slash piles, let me know because I had a guy the other day say, oh, well, you know, you should just chip them up and sell them for cedar chips. And I haven't actually looked at that yet, but man, if, if it's more uh, profitable to chip that pile up for cedar chips and just ship them out in, in super sacks, that would be awesome because I could just get a big chipper in here, or a tub grinder or something, chip all these piles up and then, uh, and then just get them off to the get them off to the uh, the customer and I wouldn't have to be screwing around burning and, and doing all that stuff in this these barrels and fire and putting it out and starting it up again. So, um, but let's get uh, this, this process started and we'll see how it goes. So the first order of business here is we're gonna get some of this stuff cut up into smaller pieces and little kindling so I can get my fire started in my barrel. <laughs> So we'll get some of the stuff cut up into kindling here so we can uh, get something started. The cedar's real nice because it splits so easy. But we'll get some initial feedstock here and get a little fire going. All right, just got a little cedar fuzz bark down there. Can do this without knocking the thing over. 
And we'll just start with a little bit of kindling like that. We can get that going there a little bit. I've been spoiled. It's been so dry for so long that I was hoping this would be pretty dry still, but we've gotten so much rain that uh, that it's really pretty wet. I think that'll go. Get a little bit of kindling going here. And the idea is, is once this gets going pretty good, it'll burn pretty smokeless. But we'll see how it goes here. All right, that's going now. And we tipped the, the barrel at, I don't know what that is, 30 degrees, 45 degrees. So we can draw air in the bottom and then let the smoke come out the top. And that's just to get the fire going. Once we have it about a third of the way full with coals, maybe half, I don't know, I'll, I'll tip it up and then we can just feed it from the top down. But you gotta get the fire going first and get a nice bed of coals in there in the bottom. So let me get it going here, rip snorting, and then uh, we'll check back on it in a minute. What I've noticed is that you add a little bit of stuff to it and it starts smoking. And here in the next couple minutes, it clears right up and it, it all the smoke goes away and it's just nice and clean, a nice clean burn. Um, but I mean, it's not smoking terribly right now. But I'll check back on it in a minute. And... Uh, I think it, I think, it, so we'll see, there you go, it's starting to clear up already. So you drive off that first little bit of water, and uh, they're smoking again, getting up into some of that, some more of that wood. So anyway, the point of this shot was to show you that it, uh, it actually clears up pretty quick after, uh, after the initial feed you put in there. So that's, that's pretty encouraging. There's still a little bit of smoke coming, but I wanted to uh, I wanted to time this thing. I've been going about 10 minutes. We started at 10:45 this morning, so I'll let you know here how long this whole process takes. Um, but you can see it's it's burned down there some. There's some of that white ash coming, but I'm going to let that burn pretty hot. For a little bit and get a good bed of coals going. I probably should have stoked it with some smaller stuff to begin with. Um, get our coal bed going because I, I shoved a few boards in there. It looks like about two by tens or something. So that might be a little bit overkill for the first go. But uh, you can see now it's, I mean, it's burning pretty darn clean. Hardly any smoke coming off there. And we've only gone, like I said, 10, 10 minutes maybe. So I've cut some of this up into, I don't know, two and a half, three inch pieces maybe. And I'm gonna try feeding it with some smaller stuff just to get the coal bed going. So we're burning nice and clean. Starting to get some of that ash going. I'm gonna add some more of the smaller pieces in. that go a little bit. So it's actually quite interesting to watch uh, this process because right now it's burning, I mean, pretty much crystal clear. There's not hardly any smoke coming off there at all. Um, and I, I just put a bunch of wood in there and the flames are only on the very front. So if you, if you can see in the back here, there's some pieces of unburned wood that don't have any flames on them. Oh, they're starting to get some flames back there. But I think, I think what's happening is there's not enough oxygen in there to burn it all the way to the back. So I may have overfilled it. Um, now it's burning pretty good. So I don't, I don't really know exactly the best way to do this. 
I may have just overfilled it a little bit and it's finally catching up. But I know there's a lot of you guys out there that are way more into this biochar thing than I am. So so I'm I'm really looking for your comments on, am I doing this right? Am I feeding it too fast? Am I not feeding it fast enough? Uh, do you like the tip barrel idea? Do you not like the tip barrel idea? So just give me some pointers because I'd really like to make this work if I could. Um, and, and you know, I, I, I want to use this as a, as a way for us all to learn. So um, I'm going to let this go a little bit longer, I think, until the sticks that are in there, the pieces that are in there, have a little bit more white ash on them and break down a little bit more into coals. I've got a stir stick, so I'm going to give them a stir here in a little bit, fluff them up a little bit, maybe break them up a little bit. And I really want them to fall down into those, you know, those little pieces like the size of a silver dollar or smaller quarter. And uh, and then get that, that big bed of coals going. But I don't know if you want that bed of coals formed all the way before you put more wood on or not. So I don't know. I'm just standing here watching the fire talking to myself at this point. So I've also found... I'm feeding in pieces about this size. Those are maybe four inches thick at the thickest and six inches wide. Um, but I've also found that if you feed in, you know, kind of one piece at a time, it doesn't really smoke. Whereas what I did at the beginning is I just dumped a whole bunch of stuff in there and it smoked and, and did a bunch of stuff. But if you just put in a few pieces, you know, a couple pieces at a time, or I guess, I guess what I'm trying to say is an even feed rate, then it doesn't come up with a bunch of smoke and stuff. So maybe rather than just, you know, four or five big dumps in there, you have to kind of feed in a piece every 30 seconds or something. And, and my little, my log, my log's burning there, but I'll, uh, I, I think I'm gonna go a little bit longer with it tipped sideways, and then I might try tipping it up. But I'm kind of, I mean, I understand the idea of constant feed, but man, then you got to sit here and tend it all day long. I don't want to sit here and tend it all day long. I want to throw a bunch of stuff in there and go do something for half an hour. Well, I'm getting her filled up pretty fast, but there's, I can see the glowing red coals down there, kind of halfway down the drum. But we've got, I mean, we've got flame coming way out the top of the barrel now. But it just doesn't seem to be breaking down into coals very fast or very easy. But I think it's time to get her tipped up here. So let me do that. Let's see if I can do two things at once here. My stick. So there, there we go. So when the wind blows, it kind of kicks it up. But other than my smoking log over there, it's, it, I mean, it's not, it's not making any smoke at all, hardly. And we're about two thirds of the way full. Everything is looking pretty, pretty darkened up. I don't see a bunch of white ash yet on that stuff. I think I like it better turned up like this. Because it's not, it's not, there's not as much flame here. And so I think having it straight up and down, it's harder for the oxygen to get down into the barrel. And so you're having more of a py pyrolysis going on now than, a, than an active burn. So we'll try this a little bit. I'll, I'll keep putting some wood on top and see how it goes. Well, I'm back to my angle thing again. And when I had it tipped up, I just wasn't getting the combustion. It just wasn't firing and it was smoking a lot. And I think it just, because it's, it, because it's a straight barrel all the way up, there was just no way for the air to get sucked down in there. Um, so now I've tipped it back down again so the air can suck in the bottom and, and up through the top, kind of like a chimney. Uh, I'm getting way better combustion. The, the flames are nice and clean and clear. Um, 
And so I've seen online where they make those, I think they're called Contiki kilns, where they, they're like angled out at 45 and the air comes up and swirls back in the top. Um, so that's probably the better way than a burn barrel, but it seems to be working pretty good when it's on its side like this. Um, so I'm just going to keep cramming it full, packing it back down with my uh, stick and breaking up the coals and getting as good a combustion I can. And then when it's pretty much all the way full to the top, um, I'll tip it back up and I'm going to put a lid on it and just snuff it out. And, uh, and then we'll have our, our biochar uh, when it cools down. Well, we've been going almost two hours, pretty much two hours exactly. And I got our tip back up again. I'm about ready to cap this thing. But I've got these, you know, some of these bigger pieces in here, these bigger sticks and stuff. And, you know, you try and break them up with a, with a stick or something and they're still pretty solid. I want to pull one of these pieces out here and see if it's charred all the way through. Let's see if I can do this here. So see, look at there. It's still, it's still wood in the middle. Both of those, so those got to go a little bit longer. So we'll throw those back in. But what I'm learning is the smaller the pieces, the better. And I was I was chucking in some pretty thick, you know, maybe four and six inch pieces. I think ideally you want about two inch pieces or smaller. Um, but I'll let this go a little bit longer. See if I can get all that char broke up into smaller pieces, and then we'll cap it. Well, I just fluffed it with that stick, and I brought up a couple of pretty good sized pieces out of the bottom there. And I think I pushed a lot of the fine stuff down um, into the lower barrel there. But I've got, I'm, I'm back down to maybe half or two-thirds of the barrel being full. So I'm going to let this stuff burn down a little bit more um, and get it to that coal, small coal size state. And I'm going to add some more stuff to it as well, but I'm going to try and make them pretty small. I'll, I'll chop them up a little bit with the, my little falling axe there and see if I can get them small enough where they they char pretty quickly. I got her stoked again and I cut them into smaller pieces. They're probably the biggest is about two by two or two and a half by two and a half there. And uh, that really kind of sucks if I got to do that because I mean at that point I might as well just cut it all up and sell it for kindling. I'm going to go to all the trouble to cut it in small pieces. But we'll figure out what kind of what works and what doesn't here. Um, but I'm pretty encouraged that getting it smaller, a little bit smaller, and, uh, and letting it burn down a little bit more, um, is going to work pretty good and, and we'll get some good biochar out of this. So I just gave this thing kind of a final stir, um, and I, I think it's looking pretty good. I think it's all broke down. There's not really any big, huge pieces. So I'm going to, I'm going to cap this thing and, uh, snuff it out essentially. And let it cool down and we'll see what we got. And we'll let it cool down, pop it open, and take a look at our biochar. All right, let's try and manhandle this lid on here. Yep. So, I can't get it sealed, but I think it's on there pretty darn tight. I don't think there's a lot of air that's going to get in there. So that should snuff it out pretty good. We'll check back on it here in a bit. And here's our finished product. It's the next day. It's cooled down. And, uh, but I mean, it's so light. And you can see if we break up the pieces, it's, it's charred all the way through. So yeah, that worked out pretty good. I don't know, I mean, I think this stuff might be a little bit too big. So I don't know if this is something that, that we would crush down a little bit smaller. 
Um, I don't think you want it complete dust, but I don't think you want it in two inch chunks either. So um, let me know what you guys think about that. But uh, yeah, I think it was a pretty cool experiment. Like I said at the beginning, I'm just trying to figure out the process, how to do it, how it works, if it's, if it's worth it, um, how much time it takes, that kind of thing, the best way to do it. Um, so anyway, thanks, uh, thanks for watching the video and we'll see you on the next one.